Ernst Fer, professor de la Universitat de Zúric, va impartir la lliçó inaugural d'economia del curs 2015-2016, patrocinada per la UPF i els laboratoris Dr. Esteve. El professor Ernst Fer ha investigat sobre l'evolució de la cooperació humana i és conegut per les seves aportacions en el camp de la neuroeconomia. Aquest any, la lliçó va ser presidida per Rosemary Nagel, professora del Departament d'Economia i Empresa, Walter García Fontes, degà de la facultat, i José Luis Urbieta, en representació dels laboratoris Dr. Esteve. El tema principal de la lliçó van ser les preferències dels agents econòmics. Ernst Fer va començar la lliçó establint el marc teòric i preguntant-se si es podia incidir sobre les preferències de les persones. La pregunta aquí, que m'excita molt, és si podem deliberatament xapar les seves preferències, o les seves fills, per exemple. És possible fer un ésser humà més o menys pro-social? more or less prone to take risk, more or less impatient. I give you my prejudice. Yes, I believe it's possible. Per mostrar el seu punt de vista, Fer va estructurar la lliçó a través de tres preguntes. La primera es qüestionava si els moviments dels preus dels actius afecten les preferències de risc. When you look at this flat line here, the flat broken line, that's what asset prices in the US should have been if they would have been rational. Okay? Now, The actual, what you see is that actual asset prices, they, they, they show huge volatility. They show huge volatility. Uh, and note, this I mean, they are, they deviate from the broken line sometimes for a decade or more. So this is not just a short run phenomenon. This is really, prices are wrong sometimes for, for years. And uh, the question is why? And our strategy, imports a technology from psychology, which is called priming. What is priming? Priming is the activation of certain mental concepts. So I can prime a memory, for example. I can make it salient in your mind. Priming is about making things salient in your mind. Okay? And that's what we did here. So we, we rendered booms and pasts, booms and pasts mentally salient in people's minds. Even the mere priming, and you will see, it's totally innocuous what we did. Even the mere priming, if even the mere priming of a boom and bust changes people's risk preferences, how much more likely it is that a real boom or bust, which really gets you in the, your mind is really in the grip of a bust if you have assets and they lose value, how much more likely it is that a real bust will affect your risk preferences. If I can even produce that effect already in the laboratory uh, with a priming technology. La segona pregunta que el professor Fer va proposar era si la cultura empresarial afectava els treballadors de la banca. Well, here you see Jerome Carviel who created the loss for Societe General of, through on our authorized trading uh, for, for about 5 billion euros. And when he was asked why he did it, he said, well, the culture of the trading room was to make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible. Even the economist, who is not known to be a left-wing journal, uh, has, a, has, a, has a, a story about the rotten heart of finance in 2012. So there are many commentators who think there is something wrong in the, with the business culture. We ask, at which, in which industry do you work? At which bank do you work? What is your function in this bank? How many years have you been working in this bank? We just make it salient that you are a bank employee. And in the other situation, we make it, we make it salient. Uh, we ask you about your leisure activities. So it's your private identity and your banker identities. One journalist said bankers are honest unless they are reminded that, our bank, that they're bankers. Now, we have to keep in mind that, I mean, it has been used for very polemical arguments, this paper, but that's also why I point out that the bankers are the most honest population I have found. And from a scientific viewpoint, the nice thing is that it's very hard to, to assign uh, the change in honesty to anything else but a preference change. La tercera i última pregunta analitzava l'impacte de la catàstrofe nuclear de Chernobyl sobre les preferències de la població ucraïnesa. This quotation basically tells you implicitly the story. It's from, from Richard Wilson, a professor of physics at Harvard University, who said the worst disease here in Ukraine is not radiation sickness. Except for children, the physical effects are not easy to measure. 
And actually, we know for 95 to 97 percent of the population, they are inexistent. The truth is that the fear of Chernobyl has done much more damage than Chernobyl itself. And we believe that it's this fear that generates higher risk aversion, higher discounting of the future, and more conservative political preferences. And so I conclude my, my presentation with the gustibus est disputandum, we must quarrel about preferences, or with President Obama we could say, yes, we can, and it's exciting. Thank you very much. La lliçó va concloure amb una ronda de preguntes i la inauguració oficial del curs acadèmic. You said that uh, banks are willing to change business culture. And how can we expect them to change when the possibility of being caught is so low, when, when this private loss is being covered by a public expense, and when even if they get caught, the, if, if they actually go to jail or if, if they actually have to give back the money, uh, it's not um, proportional in any way to the amount that they have st stolen or made disappear or... Yeah, so, no very good question. So, uh, you are of course right. I mean, we cannot expect them to do this voluntarily and they, you see, but, but banks are not, a, the same bank in 2008 is not the same, a bank in 2008 is not the same as a bank in 2015. Declaro oficialment inaugurat el curs 2015-2016. Bon dia i bona feina a tothom.